Right, what is good, YouTube? Welcome back to another reaction. Today, we got the final episode of the Genghis Khan series. Super excited to watch this. Quite sad that we're coming to an end because I've really enjoyed this series. If you guys have not watched the other parts of this yet, they're all on my channel. There's five different parts all uploaded before this video. Genghis Khan, the final conquering years. Right, episode six. Let's go, man. Last one. Here we are. Well into his middle age and with a mighty empire under his control, Genghis Khan's thoughts linger on what will happen to that empire after he dies. Right. What will become of his family? What will become of the world he has worked so hard to shape? Oh, I, I love the Genghis Khan series, man. Why does it have to be the last episode? Why could it be longer? The 13th century. The Muslim lands of the Khwarezm Empire were the richest and most sophisticated. Do you know what? After watching this, I'm actually surprised it's like there's no movies about Genghis Khan. So, there probably is movies, but do you know what I mean? Like popular movies? Because like it's a really, really, really cool ass story. Sophisticated in the world. Its citizens soared above their contemporaries in Europe, India, and China in astronomy, mathematics, agronomy, and many other fields. But because they stood higher, they had the furthest to fall. A hundred thousand Mongol horsemen stormed the Khwarezm cities. The Sultan of Khwarezm had four times as many soldiers, but the Mongol forces yeah, no. were terrified. No, no. And they honored their promise of clemency to all who surrendered as strictly as they honored their promise of destruction to all who resisted. Cities fell one after another. Many surrendered without a fight. Others held out for a few days or weeks before falling. After defeating each city, Genghis Khan sent clerks to divide the civilian- Wait, how old is he at this point? Because he's looking- Oh. Population by profession, including doctors, I know last episode he was like judges, late engineers, voice. teachers, artisans, and religious leaders. They especially sought out people who spoke multiple languages. Despite all of their growth, wealth, and power, the Mongols still practiced no crafts themselves other than war, herding, and hunting. All of the skilled work done in their growing empire was done by the people they conquered. Oh, wow. They needed teachers as much as they needed riches. But one group in particular could expect no mercy from the Mongol forces, that group being the wealthy and the powerful. Under the chivalrous rules of warfare as practiced in Europe and the Middle East during the Crusades, aristocrats were protected and kept as hostages to be ransomed. The Mongols had no use for such pleasantries. To prevent future wars, they sought out and eliminated any them. enemy aristocrats they could find. Makes sense. Aristocrats offered nothing of value to the Mongols, and were the most likely to resist them successfully in the future. By eliminating the aristocracy, they decapitated the social system of their enemies. As the 1220s rolled in, Genghis Khan was in his 60s, at the height of his power, with right, nothing and old. no one standing in his way. But despite his Jeez, overwhelming success as a conqueror, card. he was really struggling as a father. Custom held that each son in a herding family inherited some of their family's herd. Genghis Khan intended to instead offer each son a piece of his empire. Yeah, that's not too bad. That, hey, other families get you know, a part, parts of the herd. Hey, here you are, son. You get this part of the land, you get this part of the land. You know, it's a massive empire, so... However, he also needed to choose one son to be the next great oh, Khan. Oh, no, 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 no. You know what's going to be bad for Genghis Khan? He's giving his sons, like, parts of the empire, knowing that they're going to go against each other and fight each other and probably kill each other, right? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but someone probably knows the stories of what happens with Genghis Khan's sons. But, I, but as a parent, you, just knowing that, that's going to be so disappointing. And after he died... He summoned a family Kurultai to discuss the matter. His two eldest sons, Jochi and Chagatai, were tense and terse with one another. Yeah. Ogade, his third Sorry son, arrived to the meeting slightly late and also slightly inebriated. Genghis Khan asked his eldest son, Jochi, to speak first on the matter of succession. In doing so, he emphasized Jochi's rank as his eldest son, implying he was the likely successor. Chagatai did not agree and interrupted before Jochi could answer. Jochi lunged at his brother, yeah, and there the two we go. men started to fist fight. There we Genghis go. Khan broke up the fight and tearfully pleaded with his sons. No, hey, Genghis, I know it's breaking your heart, my guy, right? But you may as well just get them to fight to the death right now, because... <sighs> Begging them to understand how different things were before they were born, when nobody was safe. He ordered them to respect each other, but he knew that he could not impose a choice on them that would last after his death. They would have to find yeah. a compromise. 
After much discussion, the family decided that neither Chagatai nor Jochi should become their father's heir, but instead agreed that the role of successor should go to their mellow, good-natured, and hard-drinking brother, Ogade. Genghis Khan then allotted his personal lands and herds to each son and separated Jochi and Chagatai, giving them kingdoms at far opposite ends of his territory. Smart. This ordeal cast a pall over the remainder of the campaign. Genghis Khan was now keenly aware of how much work he needed to do to preserve the empire after his death. He had been so dogged in his pursuit of empire and unification that he'd neglected his family. He put much effort Aww. into trying to mend the relationship between his eldest sons. He assigned them jointly to a campaign, but neither brother could agree on what tactics to use. And because of their bickering, the campaign stretched on for six months, an unprecedented amount of time for a Mongol siege. Eventually, they had no choice but to burn the city to the ground and flood it, destroying it utterly and leaving nothing to loot. You know what? You know what? Disown these two, man. Disown them. The 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 too greedy as it is, right? They're too greedy. They know they they know what they're getting, and like just look at them, man. They're working together. The Mongol conquest I'd be so the city off of Multan, as a in modern day Pakistan. Genghis Khan had set his sights on northern India, the seat of silk production. Here, however, he faced a new enemy that stopped him in his tracks. As soon as the Mongols left the dry and cold mountainous regions, both warriors and horses grew sick and weak. The Mongol bows, which were so well adapted to the extreme cold and heat of the steppe, weakened in the damp air and lost their accuracy. The Mongols were forced to- I can't lie, someone in the last episode said that the horses look cute. They actually do look really cute, what the fuck? <laughs> they look fall back and sustained massive casualties as they withdrew oh, to the more horses, familiar man. climate of Afghanistan. Despite this setback, they had succeeded in their goal of conquering the Khwarezm Empire, bringing Central Asia and much of the Middle East under Mongol control. To celebrate, Genghis Khan called for a fate that ended up being the largest hunt in history. His men cordoned off a massive area of territory, and tens of thousands of soldiers from different armies converged on the field from different directions. The hunt lasted for months, and was intended as more than a celebration. Genghis Khan also wanted to use it to mellow relations between his sons, and to end the campaign on a cooperative note. Upon returning home, the victorious Mongol army saw the fruits of their conquest. The nation had been utterly transformed. Girls who had spent their- Do you know what I would do, right, if I was Genghis? I will get my two sons in the room, and I'd be like, listen, right, I know what's gonna go down when I die. You two are gonna hate each other, you're gonna wanna kill each other, etc, right? But guess what, sons? I've set up a whole entire team of assassins, right? And if you two at any point don't, you know, follow my orders and, you know, you guys be good brothers, if you go against each other, my team of assassins will fucking kill you both, right? I'm scared of shit out of them. So then they won't do anything. They'll just, they'll just get on and be brothers, right? Instead of being greedy, right? So, you know... We, we should do something like that. Okay, days, milking goats and yaks were now wearing silk while their new servants performed menial labor for them. Elders who had never seen metal in their lives now cut meat with Damascus steel, girded Ooh. with ivory hilts. They served yaks milk from silver bowls while their musicians sang to them. But Genghis Khan was not built for this life. He didn't want to stop conquering, or maybe he couldn't stop conquering. He set out once again to campaign against the Tungut, the very first foreign nation he had conquered after his election as Great Khan. The Tungut had refused to offer troops for the Khwarezm invasion, a slight that could not stand. And establishing a base in oh, the Tungut shit. kingdom uh -oh. would offer a second chance at the Sung dynasty, a target he still coveted. And that is where Genghis Khan's story very suddenly and very mysteriously ends. What happened next remains something of a mystery. Some what? say that while traversing the Gobi to fight the Tungut, Genghis Khan stopped to catch some wild horses and was thrown from his mount, sustaining internal injuries. Some legends say that he was assassinated by a sex worker, struck by lightning, poisoned, or killed by a magic spell cast by the Tungut king. Heck, Marco Polo even reports in his book chronicling his time in the court of Kublai Khan, uh, Genghis Khan's grandson, that the great Khan was killed after taking an arrow to the knee. What All that we know fuck? for sure is that just before the Mongol victory over the Tungut, Genghis Khan died quietly.
A procession would have set out towards Mongolia with Genghis Khan's body on a simple cart. His horsehair spirit banner would have led... How do we know all, like, the whole entire story, but how the guy died? ...the way, and behind the procession would have followed his horse with a oh. loose bridle and an empty saddle. He was buried anonymously in the soil of his homeland, without a monument to mark his grave. Genghis Khan transformed Mongol warfare from a messy tribal raiding system into an intercontinental affair fought on multiple fronts across thousands of miles. His battlefield techniques made the heavily armored knights of medieval Europe obsolete, replacing them with disciplined cavalry moving in organized units. He made brilliant use of speed and surprise on the battlefield, and perfected siege warfare to such a degree that he ended the era of walled cities. He taught his people to fight not only Crazy. across incredible distances, but to sustain their campaigns over years, decades, and eventually over three generations of constant fighting. His last ruling descendant remained in power in Uzbekistan until he was deposed by the rising tide of the Soviet Revolution in 1920. Huh? Wait, it lasted that long? From the tw 1200s to the 90s? What the fuck? Genghis Khan was also brutal. His goals were achieved through the deaths of millions. The Mongols made no technological breakthroughs, founded no new religions, wrote no great books or dramas, and offered the world no I new crafts heard that wrong, or surely. methods of agriculture. Surely they last like 600 years. and assimilated. And their tactics left parts of the world depopulated to this day. But the Mongols absolutely did change the world. And that was what young Temujin had desperately wanted from the very moment he first learned how Crazy. harsh, violent, and unforgiving life could be. He eradicated torture, kidnapping, and raiding from his world, but at the cost of countless lives and entire cultures. Is peace bought with blood and maintained with force truly peace? Yo, it may be impossible. You know what? Loki, that is actually fun. You know how, like I say, he's such a good leader and stuff? Like, like... He he stopped the um, he stopped the rape and he stopped the uh, the torture, all the bad things. But then he was still, you know, invading and killing people, right? Over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Possible to say whether Genghis Khan left the world better than he found it, but it was still undeniably changed. Wow, 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 wow. I would definitely clap for that. Oh my god, amazing series. Really enjoyed that. What is this? Genghis Khan lies at history? What the f I'm gonna have to watch this. Really, really, really dope series. Really enjoyed that. Uh, hopefully you guys did enjoy it too. Let me know what you guys think of that in the comment section. If you guys do want to help out massively with the channel, I appreciate if any of you guys can subscribe. We're getting super close to YouTube partners, so any subscription really means a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video.